The labor movement or labor movement consists of two main wings, the trade union movement British English or labor union movement American English, also called trade unionism or labor unionism on the one hand, and the political labor movement on the other. The trade union movement consists of the collective organization of working people developed to represent and campaign for better working conditions and treatment from their employers and, by the implementation of labor and employment laws, from their governments. The standard unit of organization is the trade union. The political labor movement in many countries includes a political party that represents the interests of employees, often known as a labor party or «Workers' Party». Many individuals and political groups otherwise considered to represent ruling classes may be part of and active in the labor movement. The labor movement developed in response to the depredations of industrial capitalism at about the same time as socialism. However, while the goal of the labor movement is to protect and strengthen the interests of labor within capitalism, the goal of socialism is to replace the capitalist system entirely. History In Europe, the labor movement began during the Industrial Revolution, when agricultural jobs declined and employment moved to more industrial areas. The idea met with great resistance. In the early 19th century, groups such as the Tollpuddle Martyrs of Dorset were punished and transported for forming unions, which was against the laws of the time. Trade unionism was active during the early to mid-19th century and various labor parties and trade unions were formed throughout the industrialized parts of the world. The International Workingmen's Association, the first attempt at international coordination, was founded in London in 1864. The major issues included the right of the workers to organize themselves, and the right to an eight-hour working day. In 1871 workers in France rebelled and the Paris Commune was formed. From the mid-19th century onward the labor movement became increasingly globalized. The movement gained major impetus during the late 19th and early 20th centuries from the Catholic social teaching tradition which began in 1891 with the publication of Pope Leo XIII's a foundational document, Rerum Novarum, also known as, "...on the condition of the working classes." in which he advocated a series of reforms including limits on the length of the work day, a living wage, the elimination of child labor, the rights of labor to organize, and the duty of the state to regulate labor conditions. Throughout the world, action by laborists has resulted in reforms and workers' rights, such as the two-day weekend, minimum wage, paid holidays, and the achievement of the eight-hour day for many workers. There have been many important labor activists in modern history who have caused changes that were revolutionary at the time and are now regarded as basic. For example, Mary Harris Jones, better known as, "...Mother Jones", and the National Catholic Welfare Council were important in the campaign to end child labor in the United States during the early 20th century. Topic: Labor Parties. Modern labor parties originated from an increase in organizing activities in Europe and European colonies during the 19th century, such as the Chartist movement in the United Kingdom during 1838 to 50. In 1891, localized labor parties were formed by trade union members in the British colonies of Australia. They later amalgamated to form the Australian Labour Party In 1893, members of Parliament in the colony of Queensland briefly formed the world's first Labour government. The British Labour Party was created as the Labour Representation Committee, as a result of an 1899 resolution by the Trade Union Congress. 
While archetypal labor parties are made of direct union representatives, in addition to members of geographical branches, some union federations or individual unions have chosen not to be represented within a labor party and or have ended association with them. Topic: <laughs> Labor Festivals. Labor festivals have long been a part of the labor movement. Often held outdoors in the summer, the music, talks, food, drink, and film have attracted hundreds of thousands of attendees each year. <laughs> <laughs> labor and racial equality A degree of strategic bi-racial cooperation existed among black and white dockworkers on the waterfronts of New Orleans, Louisiana during the early 20th century. Although the groups maintained racially separate labor unions, they coordinated efforts to present a united front when making demands of their employers. These pledges included a commitment to the 50 to 50 or half and half system wherein a dock crew would consist of 50% black and 50% white workers and agreement on a single wage demand to reduce the risk of ship owners pitting one race against the other. Black and white dockworkers also cooperated during protracted labor strikes, including general levy strikes in 1892 and 1907 as well as smaller strikes involving skilled workers such as screwmen in the early 1900s. Negroes in the United States read the history of labor and find it mirrors their own experience. We are confronted by powerful forces telling us to rely on the goodwill and understanding of those who profit by exploiting us. They are shocked that action organizations, sit-ins, civil disobedience and protests are becoming our everyday tools, just as strikes, demonstrations and union organization became yours to ensure that bargaining power genuinely existed on both sides of the table. Our needs are identical to labor's needs, decent wages, fair working conditions, livable housing, old age security, health and welfare measures. That is why the labor hater and labor baiter is virtually always a twin headed creature spewing anti Negro epithets from one mouth and anti labor propaganda from the other mouth. <laughs> development of labor movements within nation states Historically labor markets have often been constrained by national borders that have restricted movement of workers. Labor laws are also primarily determined by individual nations or states within those nations. While there have been some efforts to adopt a set of international labor standards through the International Labor Organization international sanctions for failing to meet such standards are very limited. In many countries labor movements have developed independently and represent those national boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> development of an international labor movement With ever increasing levels of international trade and increasing influence of multinational corporations, there has been debate and action among laborists to attempt international cooperation. This has resulted in renewed efforts to organize and collectively bargain internationally. A number of international union organizations have been established in an attempt to facilitate international collective bargaining, to share information and resources and to advance the interests of workers generally. <laughs> List of national labor movements See also